Star Wars fans, episode 5 of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is here. Obviously, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this episode, drop a like and get on out of here because we're going to be breaking down the entire episode for you. So let's get right into it right now. What's up guys, Mike Guy Love Star Wars here. Today we're breaking down episode 5 of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Was this my favorite episode? Yes. Was this my favorite Reva episode? Yes. Was this my favorite Obi-Wan episode? Yes. Was this my favorite Vader episode? Yes. Was this my favorite Flashbacks episode? Yes. Was this my favorite episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but before I keep going, am I, am I wrong? Tell me in the comments below. What did you think about this episode? Rank it 1 out of 10. Just tell me what you think about this episode. Am I crazy? Was it not the best Obi-Wan episode yet? Am I just absolutely insane because I saw a bunch of cool Vader stuff, cool Reva stuff, cool Obi-Wan stuff, cool stuff in general, and I'm just losing my mind, and I'm actually wrong, and this episode sucked? Or am I 100% completely right, and this was by far the best Obi-Wan episode, and it gives us a lot of hope for the finale? Tell me in the comments below. If I had to rank this episode out of 10, I'd definitely give it a 9 at least. This was by far the best episode, and gives us crazy hope for the finale but let's break it down where we left off last week reva planted a tracker in lola who is leia's droid and tracked obi-wan to wherever they're going so that's pretty much all you gotta know except for the fact that vader let obi-wan go at the end of episode three because he saw that he had rebel help and he wants to kill all the rebels kill all of his help and make him suffer so he was like i'll let him go for now because i'm gonna get him so episode 5 opened with something I never thought I would see, and it is a flashback, and the first thing you saw was Anakin Skywalker, the back of his head, when he had the ponytail from Attack of the Clones. This means this is a flashback before Order 66, before Revenge of the Sith, probably mid to early Clone Wars. This is what we've all been waiting for. Hayden Christensen was all throughout the marketing, he was in all the press tours, and we were like, where is he? We saw a couple clips of him getting into the Vader suit. We saw one clip of him very far away when they were on Mapuzo, and Obi-Wan thought he saw Anakin, but it wasn't actually him. But now we're getting actual flashback scenes of him training with Obi-Wan. So yes, this flashback was just a training session, but there was a lot of cool stuff in this training session, and it was really just the anchor of the whole episode talking about how Vader has no control and how Obi-Wan knows this. But it cuts to Vader on his ship and Reva comes in and tells him that we know where Obi-Wan's going. He's going back to Jabim. We got him tracked and ready to go. And Vader's like, okay, here you go. Have a pin. It makes you the Grand Inquisitor. And as we all know, at this point, Reva is just being played by Vader and it is so awesome. Then it cuts to Obi-Wan and Leia landing back on Jabim, and there's a bunch of people waiting. They're waiting to leave the planet because they took the transport with them when they went to save Obi-Wan on the Inquisitor's base. They took that transport that was supposed to take these people to safety, so they're just waiting to be taken to safety, and now they're being tracked by the Empire and Vader. Haja's back. Kamal Nanjiani's character is back. We haven't seen him since Episode 2 when he helped Leia and Obi-Wan get off Dayu, so this is pretty cool. Cuts back to Vader in hyperspace, and he's on his way, and he tells them to shut that base down. Just trap them in there. And Reva's like, you think this is a good idea? And he's like, yes, I do. All right, calm down. It cuts to Lola, who's got the red lights still going because she's still possessed by this tracker, who goes into the vents and cuts off the power, which closes the gate so that they can't leave. You saw Obi-Wan see more of the writing than he saw on Mapuzo, and he sees a bunch of lightsabers and Jedi robes, and... You don't really know what he's thinking right now. Does he think all these Jedi are dead? Do you, does he think that Quinlan is dead? Does he think that these people are still alive and still has hope? We don't really know what Obi-Wan's thinking right now. But all this stuff is key for what happens after the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Because we know that Obi-Wan ends up on Tatooine just looking after Luke. And seems to have no hope for anybody else in the galaxy being alive. So at some point that has to happen. All these Jedi either he has to know are dead or there has to be something that just brings him back to Tatooine to stay there. Because right now, it seems to me like Obi-Wan's ready to fight with the Rebellion and fight against the Empire. It cuts back to the training session flashback during the Clone Wars, and you hear Obi-Wan tell Anakin that he has grown too aggressive. Again, like I said, this flashback is just an anchor for the episode. It talks about how Vader is being too aggressive attacking Obi-Wan throughout the episode. And then it cuts to Vader, who again is being too aggressive, 
arrives at Jabim, sends a bunch of transports down to trap them there. Back on Jabim, Obi-Wan gives this crazy speech, rallying up the people to defend this base because they either they're going to die or they're going to get out of here alive with Obi-Wan's help. Purge troopers and stormtroopers and Reva, who just landed, are ready to blast down this blast door and get in there and kill all the rebels and get Obi-Wan for Vader. They can't get the hangar doors open, so they send Leia into the vents. This is like Lego Star Wars, where you have to be Anakin Little Annie from the Phantom Menace to get into the vents. It's, it's cool. Obi-Wan gets a transmission and has to walk away, and it's Bale telling him that if all goes wrong, I will go to Tatooine and protect the boy. Now we know that this transmission is very important because if we've all seen the end of the episode, we know that this ends up in the wrong hands. You get a scene of Tala telling Obi-Wan about how when she was with the Empire, she thought that they were just bringing in prisoners and they were actually killing 14 Force-sensitive people. So she really figured out that the Empire are not the good guys and she had to get out of there. How she's coping with all that and trying to avenge herself is by joining the Rebellion and fighting off the Empire. Obi-Wan hears this from Tala, he hears all the horror stories from the Empire, how they're killing four sensitive people, and again, it makes me seem like Obi-Wan's ready to join the Rebellion, he's not ready to go sit on Tatooine and just protect Luke for the next four, nine years, ten years, until A New Hope, I, it just doesn't seem like that's how it's going to go right now, so something has to happen by the end of this show, or sometime here, where... Obi-Wan wants to just protect Luke and end on Tatooine. Does he see a bunch of Jedi die and think that there's no hope left and Luke is the only hope? We don't know. We don't know what happens, but hopefully in the finale it explains why he just ends up back on Tatooine and stays there for the next nine years protecting Luke. So when Reva and Obi-Wan talk is one of the coolest scenes because they're just talking and Obi-Wan says, how did you know Anakin was Vader? I'm sure he would have kept that a secret, so how did you know? Plus you're too young to even have known who Anakin Skywalker was unless you were at the Jedi Temple during Order 66. You were a youngling, Obi-Wan puts two and two together, and we get a flashback of Order 66 of Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker coming into the Jedi Temple and killing younglings. Now this is awesome. People since 2005 have been waiting for this scene of Anakin storming the Jedi Temple, killing all the Jedi and the younglings, and it was awesome. Reva explains how she had to hide with the dead bodies, play dead, until Anakin left because he slaughtered all of her friends and all the people that she knew as family. She gets very upset because obviously she's thinking about how she lost all of her friends and all of her family to Anakin. And Obi-Wan is pretty much telling her that you can still turn on him. And Obi-Wan pretty much realizes at this moment that maybe he has an ally in Reva and could help to take down Vader. Reva gets pretty mad. Reva gets pretty pissed and opens the door with her lightsaber, cuts right through it, and opens the door and Obi-Wan pushes her back. Still proving that Obi-Wan is getting stronger and stronger and that he's way stronger than Reva and just pushes her back so far. It starts a giant firefight between the stormtroopers and the rebels inside the base and the stormtroopers just kind of just waltz right in and kill a bunch of rebels and one of them being Tala and of course the robot from episode 3. Everybody loves this droid at this point, right? Yeah. Exactly. Tala and this droid get shot down and Tala sacrifices herself with a grenade to kill a bunch of stormtroopers and also to redeem herself from what she did with the Empire. It's a, it's a pretty full circle thing. It's very poetic, as George Lucas would say. Again, cuts back to the anchor of this episode, which is the flashbacks where Anakin has Obi-Wan pretty much on his knees in the flashback and says, admit it, you have been beat. Then it cuts back to Obi-Wan, who's giving Haja his lightsaber, his transmitter, and his blaster, all of his weapons, and saying, I'm surrendering, so yeah. Going in there defenseless, and they're like, what are you doing? And he's like, I won't be defenseless. I don't need weapons to be defenseless. I can do this, guys. Calm down. I got this. Obi-Wan talks to Reva again and is trying to convince her to turn on Vader. It's just her whole plan this whole entire time, and he's like, I'm bringing him right to you. You're not bringing Vader to me, I'm bringing him to you so that you can help me out by taking Vader out. Flashes back to the training session where Anakin has now disarmed Obi-Wan. He has no more lightsaber and he's pretty much said, you've been beat. And Obi-Wan looks back at him and says, your need for victory, Anakin, it blinds you. Because Vader is blind at this moment. He's blind to Reva. He knows that Reva's kind of just playing him, but he's blind to it and it could cost him. 
But this isn't just a flashback for Obi-Wan. This is a flashback for Anakin too. So he's remembering this and learning from this and not letting Reva get away with this and not letting Obi-Wan get away with this. So I kind of think Reva was letting Obi-Wan go when she brought him back into the base and closed the doors with only two stormtroopers. So maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but Obi-Wan does escape and gets back to the transport and Vader lands and says, I'll get him myself. It cuts back to Leia, who's found Lola, who takes the tracker off of her, bringing her back to the light side, because Lola kind of went all Sith evil red eyes for a minute there, and then they fix the hangar door, and it opens up. Everybody's panicking as alarms are still going off, and Haja drops the transmitter, of course, as he's running to the transport to get off this place. Vader comes in as the transport is taking off. He literally forces it back to the ground, showing Vader's strength. This was Vader's best episode by far. It showed his true strength, and it was awesome. Not only does he bring this transport to the ground, by the way, it's literally a spaceship taking off into space with jet fuels and whatever bl boosters going crazy. And Vader's like, no, I'll take that, thank you. Literally puts it back on the ground and tears it to pieces. Literally just takes the side off of it without even gesturing his hand. He's just like, boop, and boom, the whole thing tears apart. Epic. This is some awesome Vader stuff, but nobody's there. Nobody's there. He's been bamboozled. And another transport takes off the other hangar over, and he can't catch that one. The last scene of the flashback is Obi-Wan taking the lightsaber from Anakin. Even though Anakin disarmed Obi-Wan, he didn't need it. He just disarmed Anakin. And he said to him, you're a great warrior, but your need to prove yourself is your undoing. So him taking down this transport using the force and just ripping it to shreds was his undoing because he didn't even realize that there could have been a different hangar where they could be escaping. He went in there by himself. His need to prove himself was his undoing. At this moment, Reva comes up behind him and tries to strike him down. And now this is awesome. The fight scene between Reva and Vader in this episode is legendary. Vader is just toying with her the whole time. He's so much more powerful than her. He literally doesn't even take out a lightsaber, his own at first. He just uses the force to stop the blade every once in a while. You can't strike me down. I'm literally invincible to you. And it's just tossing her around. Reva opens both her blades and starts spinning the lightsaber like the Grand Inquisitor does. Invader actually stops the spinning, slows it down to a complete stop, forces the lightsaber away from her, and splits it in half, throwing the other half at her feet, saying, fight me, this is going to be how you die. The fight starts, it's pretty cool. Vader actually throws the lightsaber at her, which is awesome because we've seen Vader throw his lightsaber in Battlefront 2. If there's any Battlefront 2 fans here, tell me in the comments below. But then he forces the lightsaber away from Reva, forces the other lightsaber up off the ground, has both lightsabers, and it's done for Reva. Reva's on her knees looking up at Vader, and she flashes back to the Order 66 where he's killing all the younglings in the Jedi Temple, and then she gets stabbed in the chest. Invader says, did you really believe I did not see it, youngling? Literally calls her a youngling so badass as he stabs her in the chest. And the Grand Inquisitor, who's alive, by the way, has two stomachs, am I right? <laughs> Walks in with a bunch of stormtroopers. And the Grand Inquisitor says, revenge does wonders for the will to survive. Because revenge kept him alive and brought him back to Vader. And he healed all up. So that means he's been with Vader for a while now. And Vader has just been using Reva for the longest time now. Because Vader is the best. And the Grand Inquisitor pretty much tells her, we're leaving you where we found you in the gutter and they leave. It cuts back to the transport where Obi-Wan senses something is completely wrong and it goes back to Reva who's on the ground still alive, grabs her lightsaber, crawls all the way over to the transmitter that Haja dropped and sees Bail Organa say Tatooine, say Owen, say the, the, the boy and she's putting two and two together and is probably going to be on Tatooine at, at the end of the next episode probably going to kill Luke. It then cuts to Tatooine to where the Lars homestead is and you see a young Luke asleep. Roll credits. This episode again was the best by far to me at least. Tell me in the comments what you think but it was the best by far to me. The best Reva stuff 
the best Darth Vader stuff, the best Obi-Wan stuff, all the best stuff from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show was in this episode. When Vader took down that transport and just ripped it to shreds, it was unbelievable. When he was just toying with Reva in the fight, unbelievable. Some of the best Vader stuff, but again, flashback of Order 66, Anakin killing a bunch of younglings, and flashback of Obi-Wan and Anakin training. With Hayden Christensen's return, they finally got to use him, and it was awesome. Next week, we get to see the rematch of the century in the finale, and we probably get to see Reva go after Luke on Tatooine. So this is going to be an awesome finale, and this was a great, great episode 5 runner-up to the finale. But tell me what you think in the comments below. If you haven't rated it already, rate it in the comments below out of 10. Tell me what you think about the episode as a whole. Are you hyped for the finale? Did this make the Obi-Wan Kenobi show a lot better for you? Because it did for me. This was like the turning point. This was a huge, must-needed turning point i said to myself this morning i said if this episode is not good this could be the end of the star wars community they might actually implode people were going crazy about the lackluster first four episodes of the obi-wan kenobi show and although i liked the parts of them there were clearly parts that needed some work but this episode again was a life raft for star wars fans this was awesome Smash like if you like this video, hit subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a video and my pretty face will show up in that recommended feed of yours. We only have one episode left. The finale is next week. So don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a video. I'll have prediction videos for that episode. I'll have breakdown videos for that episode. I'll be breaking down more stuff in this episode like the Vader vs. Reva fight and other videos. So if you don't want to miss that, hit subscribe and hit that bell. If you want to talk nerdy stuff with some Star Wars nerdy people, there is a link in the description below to a Discord called The People Who Love Star Wars. Just a bunch of people talking nerdy stuff. If you want to talk episode 5 of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, go talk it in the description below. There's a link to a Discord. And may the Force be with you. Always.